He's researched frogs. One of the frogs is the Sao Tome giant tree frog. One of my favorite frogs. One of your favorite frogs. Yeah. So a topic that you. Are we about. going? I've been rolling for like You've been thirty rolling? seconds now. Wait, we got to do the intro. All right, do the intro. We gotta do the intro. Okay. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. Welcome to the first episode of the talk show portion of TBD. Maybe first episode. I'm gonna restart. What should the episode be called? Welcome but to not the, episode. What should the talk show welcome be called? To, to, oh, yeah. What's the name of the talk show? Don't look at me. You're the one. Uh, okay. wel- welcome, okay. to, welcome to... Welcome to the first episode. Need, need, no, no, needs a name. Um, welcome to... Welcome to the D-Tech Toilet, where we dump all our thoughts and ideas. Wait, who's that talking dragon from that song? Puff the, the Magic Dragon? Puff the Talking Dragon. Uh, welcome. Wait, but that has drug connotations. Okay, welcome to... Welcome to... The dragon's dragon. first talk. What, welcome to Fire, Fireside Chats. No. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the first episode of Fireside Chats. Hi, I'm Ch- Franklin D. Roosevelt, and I'm going to chat. Go, go off screen for a second, Benji. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of Fireside Chats with your host, Andrew Nori. Today we'll be interviewing the very eccentric Benjamin Chang, also known as Benji. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I've been having some back problems lately. Back problems? Was that chair comfortable? Yeah. It's fine. Okay. So, first thing I want to ask you is, who is Benji Chang? Me. I wanted to ask you one specific thing. It's about your fashion. Uh huh. How has your fashion evolved from white shirt, Stanford jacket, uh-huh. and now got apples? So what what caused this fashion renaissance? Well, in Benji Chain. From fifth to eighth grade, um, I almost exclusively wore white shirts to middle school. Then in ninth grade, I diversified my portfolio a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I switched from just stocks to stocks and bonds. If we're talking in financial speak, mm-hmm. um, and so I started wearing colorful shirts. Um, then in tenth grade, I was like, shirts. And then in eleventh grade, I really started diversifying my portfolio, and that's how we came to things like this. What happened was between the summer of tenth and eleventh grade, I went to the four fashion capitals of the world: Paris, London, New York City, and Milan, Italy. Um, I studied with the masters there. Mm-hmm. I studied how to um, design clothing, make clothing, and really pull off a look. So I've noticed at the end of, I think it's the last Friday of every month, you do a little thing with your friends where you're all... I don't have any friends. Where you all dress in very eccentric clothes, like I remember, and like Ethan Shedd was a Boy Scout. What brought that on? Well, for one thing, um, just doing that sort of eccentric clothing, and, and it reminds me that I'm better than everyone else. It's a status symbol for one thing, mm-hmm. so I, I kind of look, look down on them in that sort of way. And so then I brought in a group of people, uh, of extremely talented individuals, that I thought deserved to share that sort of status with me. I'd say we're not entirely human. What, what are you then? It's classified. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I've noticed that you are a very prominent member in the Design Tech TED Talk team. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Would you like me to? Yes, I would. My role last year was curator and vice president. This year, I'm just a curator, which basically means I uh, select speakers for uh, our TEDx talks. Um, although, if I if I did have to say have to say one thing though, I would say that uh, a lot of the credit goes to Adeline Chen, who's really the driving force behind TEDx, um, and she she really gives it its energy. So, what did you do last year as the vice president? Uh, honestly, not a whole lot, because our event wasn't. Um, wasn't too hot last year because, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, working out first year kinks and that sort of thing. So um, I was just trying to find speakers, um, student speakers. This year, this year we're uh, going through a much more rigorous review process. I noticed last year I walked by one of your guys' meetings in the mm-hmm. atrium and you were kind of, I think this was when you were sick, you were kind of just playing the piano, but you were sitting crisscross on the ground so you couldn't really see the keys. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I remember that, yes. So um, what most people would call sick um, it's actually more of a, a, of a, I guess you humans would call it a meditation session. Mm-hmm. So when I become sick, it's really a chance for me to study in another plane of existence 
And so most people thought, oh, he's just sick. He's doing his funny mess around thing. I'm playing the, no, 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 no. I was studying with the master pianist of the astral plane. But you couldn't see the keys. It was the astral plane. But you were touching the piano in the normal plane. Because, so m most people might think is, perhaps this is because of the movie uh, Doctor Strange, but most people might think when you go to the astral plane, your physical body doesn't move. No, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. you, in the astral plane, you perform various you know, complex tasks, like playing the piano or something, or doing some hot jazz, and your physical body reflects that slightly, but in a much more dumbed-down version in the physical world. Oh, okay. So you also help get the vending machines. That's correct. Right? What was your role in that project? Well, it was a D-Lab called uh, Organizing Oracle, led by uh, Christopher Wall, physics teacher, ninth grade design tech high school. And one of the members uh, said, why don't we do a vending machine? And we were like, yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just uh, it ended up being a lot easier than we thought. We actually didn't have to pay for the vending machines, if I remember correctly. Um, we just order them, they come, and the company gets part of the profit, and we get some as well. But it caused a giant shift in the economy at DTEC. It did. If I had to estimate, I'd, rec I'd, 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 I'd say we're taking in like a, a million dollars a day. Million dollars a day? Yeah. How much does that go to DTEC and how much goes to the the, if, the man? If I remember correctly, it's 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 not 50-50, but I think it's somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know why DTEC's complaining about our funding. We're making $500,000 a day. Are you a part of a service team? I forget. No, no. I, I prefer to keep to myself, stay privileged. I, I feel that if I go on a service trip or help out any underprivileged people, <laughs> yeah. I'll lose my sort of ascended ascended level and sort of become like a, a human being. Are you a god? Not in the Christian sense. Do you play Fortnite? Are you a god in Fortnite? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of video games, actually. They sort of suck time out of my out of, out of my godly duties. What are your godly duties? I can't tell you that. Please? No. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you go by Benji? Ah, that's an interesting story. Actually, it's not, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Okay. So, what happened was, I was born, right, in mm -hmm. San Francisco, mm -hmm. California, to be specific. Um, I was born to Paula Hamilton and Ken Chang. I believe, um, for the first few years of my life, they called me Benjamin. But then I started going to a daycare, right? You know, I was like two or three or four in those years. Um, um, and the assistants there started calling me Benji, and it stuck ever since. There was a point in my life where I didn't even know how to spell Benjamin, because I just always been, been Benji. Is that also your god name? No, my god name is Ingenep. That's Benji backwards. Oh, okay. I understand. You told me about your past. Tell me about your future. What do you want to be? Well, I hope to be a senior in one year. What do you hope to be in two years? In two years, I hope to be in college. Which one? I've actually um, um, been interested in small liberal arts colleges. Most people might be like, <laughs> because uh, a lot of people know I'm interested in STEM, but actually uh, the, the, the bigger, you know, brand name colleges are sort of like, it's, it's kind of kind of boring to me. They seem like, you know, not, not, a, not, not, so, not so hip and cool. I mean, they're going to be studying biology, or like astrophysics sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Hope to be a biologist slash astrophysicist in the future, mm -hmm. and uh, I like jazz. Jazz is pretty like cool. Jazz, you like jazz? Yeah. You play, oh, you play the sax? I play the oh, alto yeah. saxophone. Alto saxophone. Um, I hope to become an excellent alto saxophonist in the future. What are some songs that you know on the alto saxophone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Careless Whisper. Mm -hmm. What other songs? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know this uh, this one jazz song called Take Five. Um, it's by this guy named Dave Brubeck. He's dead now. That's the, that's the problem. I can't see any of the musicians I like in concert because they're, they're all dead. dead. Oh, okay. So you like older music? Yeah, yeah my favorite my favorite um, musician ever is uh, Francis Albert Sinatra. Is he a big inspiration for you? He's a big inspiration because um, um, he was you know a really symbol of that time. He's like. He like objectified women, so that's a really big goal of mine. Probably had ties with the mafia, another big goal of mine. Um, you can't put that in the. You can put that in the thing, right? <laughs> so, so big, big inspiration. Big inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. You're taking biology this year. Do you like it so far? That's correct. I'm in uh, Neil Adicott's biology class. Um, unfortunately, I, don't, I do not think we are doing enough hands-on. I wish we were going to the California Academy of Sciences every day, 
and I wish we were talking to Bob Drews every day. Who is Bob Drews? Bob Drews, a real inspiration for me. Bob Drews is the grandfather of Jackson Drews, who some of you might know. Uh, Jackson Drews is a student at Design Tech High School. Bob Drews is his grandfather, and he's a herpetologist. That means he studies, uh, not herpes, but he studies reptiles and amphibians um, at, and at the California Academy of Sciences, and he's been a really big inspiration for me. Do you have any other inspirations other than Frank Sinatra and Bob Drews? Well, I've got Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. Bob Drews, mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm -hmm. Richard Dawkins, oh yeah, David Attenborough, Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, <laughs> Martin Luther King Sr. What about just Martin Luther? Martin Luther, from like the Protestant 14, reformer. Yeah, the Protestant reformer. Giordano Bruno, um, Claire Patterson, uh, Joanne Freeman from U.S. History Lectures. Thanks, Mr. Logos. David Grote, mm -hmm. Matt Cooley. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it? That's it. Understand. Mom, Dad, it's grandparents, aunts, uncles. You and seem to have a lot of inspirations. I do. Well, I like I to, as you know, diversify my portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I like to draw inspirations from many things to make sure that I, I can sort of Cover, cover the distance. One thing that a lot of students seem to be drawn to about you is your eccentric nature, uh -huh. as like wearing that shirt uh -huh. incorrectly. So what do you think brought on this eccentric nature? Um, well, I think it was a weird combination of nature versus nurture. You know, the old argument, what's more powerful, nature or nurture? Mm -hmm. um, in my case, it was I think it was a really unique combination of both. Mm -hmm. um, my genetics, I think, played a, a role in it. Um, I think both my parents are sort of out of the norm, but nowhere near as, as much as I am. And so I think that, that that other part came from, really came from the nurture. They, they really sort of just sort of made our home a real open environment and made it real easy for us to talk about stuff. And so that made me just a, a real open guy. Thanks, thanks so much for coming here today, Benji. And be sure to catch up next time when we do something like this. I'm not sure when. We're killing our planet. We are. <laughs>